Riven, one of the most difficult and fun champions in League of Legends. Since her release, Riven has been the symbol of mechanical prowess. Pro players and one tricks alike spend hundreds of hours on this champion just to show off how talented they are. Being good at Riven is the hallmark of any great mechanical player. But today, we talk to someone who does something completely different. This player doesn't have any complex combos or mechanics on Riven. He doesn't even think that mechanics are the most important thing for Riven players to have. He fails wall hops and doesn't even try to go for mechanical outplays. Yet despite his lack of innate talent, he's been able to become the number one Riven player in EU West for Season 13. Today, we talk to the most calculating and one of the most consistent Riven players in the entire world. Hey gamer, are you tired of clash tourneys? Are you tired of getting all your friends together to compete just to get riot clined and get kicked out before your tournament even begins? All to compete for a ward skin that you don't even want? Well, now there's a better way to play tournaments. Introducing Repeat.gg. Repeat.gg is an esports tournament platform where gamers can earn cash prizes by playing their favorite video games by just playing regular ranked games. Instead of having to get the whole team together, you can log in, connect your league account, and it just takes stats from your games and uses those to put you on a leaderboard. You'll only be competing with players from the same role as you, so don't worry about how many pentakills you're getting as a support player. You can play as many games as you want, and Repeat.gg will score you based on your top 10 games. That way, you don't have to worry about how late you've joined a tournament. Players can join tournaments at any time, even on the very last day, and they'll be running with cash prizes that pay up to 40% of the users in their tournaments. You can download Repeat.gg today with my link in the description. Hey guys! My name is Alois, and my favorite champion is Riven, and I've been a Riven player since Season 7. Later in Season 10, I got picked up by SK Gaming, and up until November this year, I played League professionally for SK. Since I started playing League professionally, I obviously could not stay a one-trick. Since November 2022, however, I made the conscious decision to stop pursuing a professional career. I wanted to see how strong Riven would be for Season 13. I ended up peaking at rank 36 with a 71% win rate. And currently, I am the highest ranked Riven player in EOS, and my goal is to hit rank 1 and teach everybody how to play Riven. How you want to play Riven in the early game is very, um, is very aggressive. She is not that good when she's even or behind in the item curve in the game. So from the get-go, since Riven has a very strong level 1, you want to try and make use of that strength as early as you can. Even before the means wave have spawned, you can already try and cheese enemy jungle by hopping over the Baron pit or maybe late invading, so you can try and secure a lead from that uh, point forward. Now, if this doesn't happen or you don't get the opportunity, you can try and cheese in one of the bushes and wait for your opponents to walk up to the wave to last it, and then you can get behind them and try and get cheese off like that. And if the matchup doesn't allow you, let's say you're playing against a champion that is just stronger than you in level 1, you can just try and approach it uh, differently and play towards your level up timers. Every losing matchup, you can win by getting your level 2 first. And why I go longsword start on Riven is because I look for equal health traits in the early game. Very often, let's say I'm facing a Fiora, she has one potion and I have three. So let's say I trade 50% of my HP for 50% of her HP in the early game. I will actually benefit simply because I have three potions and she only has one. So I try to play the early game very aggressive and try to establish my leads in the first four races in the game. What I always tell everybody whenever I'm playing Riven is the first four ways in top lane are the most important because they will ultimately decide what the rest of your laning phase is very likely going to look like. If something goes wrong in those first four ways, your game doesn't feel that nice to play. However, if the first four ways go really well, your game feels very nice to play and you can really snowball off of that. So I really recommend to most Riven players to really study their first four ways. What I mean with studying the wave is learning how to when to do a second wave crash, a third wave crash or a fourth wave crash. Depending on the on your matchup and the jungle interaction in the early game, you can make a plan with your wave to set it up in a way that you can always still play aggressive or put your opponent in a hard spot. We're playing Riven with Flesh Ignite, and if you're ever overextended, you do not have TP to get back, you don't have anything to get back, and they can even freeze onto you, and you're gonna be down a level, down an EXP, down in gold, your lane ends there. Because Riven plays to snowball, if you fall behind, it's over. You play top lane around the junglers. He uses E. I've conquered. I've conquered stacks with Ignite here. He's dead. There are lesson learned, guys. I get my conquer stacks up with my Ignite there. You see? The ranged conqueror is so broken. You keep your conquer stacks up like that. And th there's nothing they can do against it. Alois is a very successful player because he snowballs on Riven in just about every single one of his games. So how does he do that without extreme mechanics? He does it through simple wave manipulation. The first four minion waves of a game are the most important to a top laner. 
They decide whether you're going to be out-leveling your opponent and how vulnerable you are to the enemy jungler. In this game, Alois is playing into Sejuani. He knows that an extremely tanky champion like Sejuani is pretty much impossible to kill by himself, so he's going to need some jungle help. He starts his game off by warding the enemy blue to know where the Evelyn will be pathing. He's watching his Viego to figure out what his path is going to be and knows that he's going to do a full clear. Because he has this information early on, he knows that Viego's not going to be topside for at least another 2 minutes. So he fast pushes the next wave in order to get the minions under the tower and have the wave start pushing towards him. When you're playing as a top laner, you have to give junglers incentives to come to your lane. They don't want to show up if their camps are still up. So it's your job as the top laner to make the lane as juicy as possible. This way, the jungler can eat their camps and still have the enemy team for dessert. So how, how I play League of Legends, it is very risk averse and very calculated. I don't try to rely too much on my mechanics or try to outplay so much. I really play fundamentally based. And that means every wave I make a plan on, be it a bounce, be it a push out, something like that. My goal in League of Legends is always to try and get as low deaths as possible and as high average resources as possible as well. And if I never die and get 10 cents per minute every game, we'll still also pressuring my opponent. I also farm jungle camps uh, during my efficiency. And then I always am in a position where I'm very strong in the game. And then once I get my two to three item score, then I can just completely take over the game and I know how to take over team fights. Mechanics on Riven are very important. However, they are also overcomplicated at the same time. I only have three basic combos that I use on Riven, which are the fast combo, which is your Q auto, Q auto, Q auto. Then you have your double cast, where at the end of your E animation, you can perform two abilities at once. So either WQ or RQ, or even R, W and Q, which is a triple cast. And the last one would be uh, your Q delay. However, there's also some combos where you can do some insane flash combos and all that stuff. I don't make use of that. They're not consistent. They're actually very hard to pull off. I don't need any special mechanics, it's just the basics, and I've mastered the basics. When it comes to Riven herself as a champion, it can look really cool and flashy to be able to do a full combo on an entire team and one-shot them, but if you mess up the combo or get CC'd somewhere along the way, you're basically not going to be doing much. Because Alois's gameplay is so safe and calculated, he likes to go tank in every single one of his games. When it comes to his philosophy on Riven, he's not playing her like a combo champion looking to one-shot an entire team. What he's looking to do is play her like a reset champion. Riven's cooldowns to begin with are already pretty low if you just get a little bit of CDR. With Lucidity Boots, Gore Drinker, and a Death Stance, you can have really low CDs on just about every single one of your abilities. Death Stance is an incredibly good item on Riven. Thanks to a combination of Gore Drinker healing, Triumph healing, and E shielding, as long as you're dealing damage and getting kills within teamfights, you should never be taking damage damage from this item whatsoever. While Death Dance and Gore Drinker are definitely not as cool looking as a Prowler's Claw and a Ravenous Hydra, they are safer tools when it comes to gaining elo. People that play Riven overcomplicate her too much. They try and always use their abilities whenever they off cooldown because they feel pressured to make certain outplays or they feel like I can make an outplay here, I can make an outplay here. I just play very based on my fundamentals. I know my limits well. And then with the basic combos, I just know my damage output because I always play the same setup and the same items. And then I just know my all in windows very well. And once I get to that point, I know I can just kill them like that through my basic combos. I don't need any special combos for that. For Riven in team fights, you can have multiple roles and it depends on the wing condition. So uh, team fights on Riven is, is all about planning. 80% of the team fights is actually just planning. Let's say you have a very fat AD carry and enemy have like an Akali or a Zep. Riven can actually play with her W and with her Q3 to stop these assassins and you can peel for your AD carry. However, let's say you know that enemy AD carry does not have flash before the team fight and you do. Then you have a lot more options, right? That you could also play as a dive champion. The most important part of team fighting on Riven is how you approach the team fight, as in how you come into it. While Riven has a lot of mobility, a lot of that mobility is very telegraphed. She has four short dashes and it's rather slow to complete the animation on every single one of them. Simply going into a teamfight with your Q is not really going to work because the enemies can see you coming very slowly. Flash is the most important tool that you're going to be using when approaching a teamfight. It gives you lots of options to either get onto the backline or re-engage from the frontline. If you do not have Flash, then what you need is to be able to approach from a flank. Being able to wall hop properly and getting into a good position is very important for Riven. Because you have more mobility than most other champions, what you can do is you can split push on the sides and then start rotating towards the mid lane where your team might be fighting. Even if the enemy top laner decides to rotate with you, you'll still likely be getting there faster than him because you're Riven. If you don't have flash for a team fight, then it's important that you have stopwatch or guardian angel instead. As mentioned earlier, Alois likes to play Riven like a reset champion. 
Stopwatch and GA provide the perfect amount of stasis and stalling for you to be able to get all of your abilities back up in the middle of a team fight. Uh, a lot of Riven players don't have their fundamental understanding. They're just very mechanically based. Very a lot of Riven players uh, are high elo simply also because of their mechanics, but they reach a plateau because they don't know how to proceed from there. While Riven is known for being mechanically challenging and a very showy champion, Alois decides to approach his champion from a completely different angle. He can climb to challenger with just about any other top laner, but he decides to use Riven instead because of her consistency and how broken she is when she gets a lead. He doesn't need to do fancy flash combos in order to climb. His knowledge and experience from being a pro player allows him to take one of the most mechanically difficult champions and use her to climb the ladder like he's filling out a spreadsheet. Just because a champion is designed to be mechanically flashy does not mean that you have to play her in a flashy way. <laughs> I think Riven is a balanced champion, however, I know that a lot of people would disagree with me. I think that Riven one tricks make the champion shine more than she perhaps should. I think Riven has a lot of counters. Uh, if you do not let a Riven snowball or you at least go even against her, Riven already feels very luckless to play. Uh, a lot of players just don't know how to really neutralize Riven and they always let them get ahead so then Riven feels very broken to play. Riven is by far one of the most fun champions to play in League of Legends. You will never get tired of playing her because her kit just allows you to play one team fight in a hundred different ways and there's only let's say five ways that would actually be correct. So you will never get tired of playing Riven, she's very fun and she's one of the few champions in the game that can consistently solo carry games from top lane. Not a lot of champions can do this, Riven can. She has everything you would want in a champion. She has wave clear, AoE damage, she has burst damage, she has some DPS. So if you want a complete 1v9 champion that really allows you to make use of that fighter mechanically style, then pick up Riven because she is perfect for that. He has no mana for E, he does, he does have mana.